Oh, oh, I'm not hanging too good, Frenchie. You see, there's this... Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Holy shit! Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going on and ask for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire fucking time. He even has a picture of her on his desk. What the SpongeBob SquarePants is not what you think it is. There is a secret group of puppet masters who are always watching the citizens of Bikini Bottom and pulling the strings. Hidden within Bikini Bottom are spies that keep an eye on the characters and make sure everything goes to plan. Who, who are these spies? Who are these spies? The, I, I don't get it. Get, I think I think it gotta be you. It had to be you, right? Or or is it is it is it a hot dog ice cream? Silver? Maybe? This is a conspiracy that will fundamentally change the way you look at the show Spongebob Squarepants, and I believe it's all actually intended by the creators, and I'm gonna prove it. This is The Television Theory. Hi. You guys had a great reaction to my Squilliam Fancyson theory, and I hey, hey, wait, it. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Squilliam, you lying, deceiving hey, hey, bastard! Hey, I didn't even realize that's that! That's me right but there! But trust me when hey, I wait. say that what hey, I like, discovered this time hey, is like, much, hey, wait. much bigger. To start this theory, we have mm -hmm. to go back to the very beginning of the very first episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Ah, the sea. So fascinating. So wonderful. Here, we see Bikini Bottom, teeming with life. Home of one of my favorite creatures, mm -hmm. SpongeBob SquarePants. Right. Yes, of course he lives in a pineapple, you silly. So let me ask you a question. Who's speaking in this clip? Well, obviously that's just the narrator. We hear his voice many times throughout yeah, the show. Right? Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, we hear uh, not many times, but we hear in a couple episodes. In a couple uh, episodes, he'd be speaking. Crab. Through these doors pass all the many kinds of undersea life. Pops Boating School, where diligent students learn the rules of the road. But who exactly is the narrator? Well, he's just the narrator, right? We're not supposed to think about who he is or why we're hearing him. Lots of shows have narrator framing devices we're not supposed to think about. Caillou was amazed that Mommy had made a rainbow, just like in the picture. But there's something different about this narrator. He sounds a lot like he's narrating a nature documentary. The ocean. From above, a simple blanket of water. But below, a complex world of color. The narrator actually, actually do sound like, like a dark man to me. You know, some people who taught me about life and creature, about atoms and cells. He sounds like that. He sounds like a narrator where you read a, a, a book, right? And, and the narrator read the book to you, but they read script by script, line by line. I there's I don't get it, but it seems it seems like he he a documentary narrator. Life and wonder. Ah, this so fascinating. Yeah, actually, it sounds so similar. Wonder. A little bit. A, a little bit. A little bit. I'm not. I'm not saying it has to do. It's a similar a little, a little bit. A little bit. He's an actual character in this universe. Here we are again at the Bikini Bottom Boating School. Today is once again the day of SpongeBob's Boating School exam. But more importantly, this is the last test for the year. And if SpongeBob does not pass this one, it means another whole year of boating school. Aww. Whoa, 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 hold up a minute. The fourth wall, and we actually get to see hold the narrator the camera he's been filming with. The show SpongeBob SquarePants is not just a cartoon. Everything we see is a part of a nature documentary television show being filmed by scuba divers. And if you're what? still not convinced, hold I searched up, really, up, really, really hard up. and found an old SpongeBob DVD bonus feature that basically confirms everything. Since before time even existed, land-loving scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea. The citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. The name of this miraculous place? Bikini Bottom. 
Poring over the mass of brainy masterminds scattered about this strange land, the scientists chose six Bikini Bottom residents at random to study. As the scientists marveled at the advanced knowledge and superior intellect of these six creatures... I went to college! They rolled their cameras and took notes. And now, finally, we can learn all of the things that these smarty pantses have to teach us. Life lessons from Bikini Bottom. I don't know how it can get any more clear than that. Yeah, now, if you watch the show I, with this I, new information I, in mind, I, I, some things start to take on a whole new meaning. Throughout the series, there's this weird, unexplained running gag of a human oh, hand. Oh yeah, yeah, we see yeah, a couple it's even in the beginning of every episode. episode in the intro for the show. Maybe the filmmakers are doing a bit more than just studying these characters. The hand seems to mostly interfere just to maintain the health and safety of the characters, like treating SpongeBob for the suds. Well, Mr. Squarepants, it seems you have the suds. Are you ready for your treatment? Oh, Hans! It makes sense that the filmmakers wouldn't want to risk the safety of their main character. After all, there's no show without SpongeBob, but that's not the only reason why they interfere. Why? Season 3, episode 16, I Had an Accident, is infamous for having one of the most absurd, confusing uh, endings in the entire show. It ends with a real gorilla suddenly coming out of a Patrick costume and attacking the characters. A real gorilla? Huh? <laughs> then as soon as Spongebob begins to question the logic of the scene, this happens. What's a gorilla doing underwater in the first place? Hold on. Do you know how it happened, sir? It is unlikely for a gorilla to be underwater if they can't breathe. Unlikely for them to be underwater. Suspicious. Mm -mm -mm. Well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the... George, they're onto us! Let's get out of here. What the... Oh, hold on. Breaking the fourth wall? Oh heck nah. Oh heck nah. Y'all breaking the fourth SpongeBob wall. SpongeBob is a weird show, but this has always stuck out as being just a little too weird. But knowing what we know now, I think I can explain what's going on here. This isn't a real gorilla. Every other land animal we've seen underwater wears a helmet and is drawn in a cartoony style. Yeah. The gorilla is shown in a live action style, and the only time we ever see live action characters is when they're human. So I believe both the gorilla and the horse he rides away on are humans wearing costumes. The filmmakers set this whole thing up just to make the episode more entertaining. It's starting to seem like this isn't strictly a nature documentary anymore. It's more of a reality TV show made for entertainment. A little bit, a little like Kim Kardashian type reality. Who knows whether absurd elements of the show are actually put there by the filmmakers to make the show more entertaining. Although, based on people's reactions, it doesn't always seem to pay off. But how far will the filmmakers go to make the show more profitable? Yeah. Saturday morning in Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob is watching his favorite Saturday morning show, The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, enjoying a bowl of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal, and wearing the official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. If we think of this as a television show, this sounds an awful lot like a product placement. I mean, listen to how the narrator specifically says the full names of the products. The Adventures of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy brand cereal. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy breakfast bikers. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mo Coco drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua. No artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's the narrator in the show. Talking to Maybe the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show is actually from the surface world. They are human after all. It makes sense that the filmmakers would choose to highlight these popular superhero characters. The more they show, the more they're gonna sell Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy merchandise. Hang on a second, why are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy the same size as all the fish in Bikini Bottom, even though humans are always shown as massive compared to fish? Mm -hmm. They literally tricked Spongebob into making a commercial for a human product. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Director. Very well. Loose the pants! Pants! There's my star! What's happening? What's happening? 
In this scene, you'll be cleaning bathroom fixtures. Okay. Let's say, where's my cleaning utensil? Don't you get it? You are the cleaning utensil. Oh! Oh no, your bathroom is a disaster. Get it cleaned up fast with the new sponge. <laughs> Household chores are a snap with new sponge. It cleans sinks. <laughs> just look at that shine. This is just like in real life how SpongeBob is such a popular character that he's used to sell tons and tons of products. So far I've shown you that the show Spongebob Squarepants is actually a documentary television show, but the creators continually interfere to push their own agendas and make more money. But that brings us to an important question. Do the characters know they're in a television show? Let's go back to that clip where Spongebob hits the cameraman. It means another whole year of boarding school! Aww. What happened? Oh, nothing, Spongebob. You just struck another pedestrian. Mrs. Puff calls him a pedestrian, which sounds more like she thinks he's just some random Bikini Bottom citizen. The different types of marine life in Spongebob are so diverse and weird looking that it's not too hard to believe that the characters just think these filmmakers are another weird type of fish. And back to the gorilla episode, mm -hmm. the gorilla and the horse immediately get nervous and run away when Spongebob questions what's going on. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's funny you should, I mean, the, see the, the, George, they're onto us! <laughs> Let's get out of here. Almost like the creators don't want the characters to be aware their lives are being interfered with. Now, there isn't right, a ton right. of footage of the characters interacting uh, with the right, filmmakers, right, right. but I dug really, really deep mm -hmm. and found the smoking gun that answers all of our questions. What? This is an old commercial from 2004 made to promote the Spongebob movie. <laughs> Spongebob. What kind of jellyfish is that? It's not a jellyfish, Patrick. It's a spaceship. <gasps> hey guys, it's Carlos from The Zone. I was wondering if you could answer a few questions. Questions? Run for your lives! No, Pat, don't you see? It wants to learn about our world, and it's chosen us. What? Yay! Oh, we've been chosen. A submarine comes down to Spongebob and Patrick to ask questions to promote the new movie. Spongebob and Patrick are clearly confused by this and think the submarine is some kind of alien. They also have no idea that they're the stars of a movie. Well, thanks guys. We'll see you in the movie! Bye! Movie? What's that? I don't know. La, 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 la. So I think it's pretty clear at this point that the characters are unaware their lives are being filmed. Yeah, they, they but are. But there are some characters that have to have some level of awareness. For example, the doctor fish that told the human hand to treat SpongeBob, and the director fish that directed the commercial for the human world. What makes these characters so special? Yeah. First off, the director fish isn't actually from Bikini Bottom. Before he directed this commercial, we saw him as a citizen of New Kelp City in the episode Whatever Happened what to SpongeBob. The? Out of all the characters they could have used, they specifically chose a character from out of town. Almost like the filmmakers didn't want to use anyone in Bikini Bottom. So you tell me you use somebody from a different city because you don't want uh, somebody from the same city. So you tell me you use somebody from uh, another, uh, another um, country, another state. So, no, not, not another country, another state or city because you don't want you people from Bikini Bottom. I don't get it. Like, like, is this going like you like you going Alex? You going like too too deep in this? Cause the screaming theory that was crazy, but this one I don't know. They might un nip the nip or tip the tip. All right. Bottom, so they wouldn't risk everyone finding out about the television show. Then there's the Doctor Fish. We don't know where he originally came from, but he's an extremely suspicious character. Usually he's purple, but sometimes he's orange, sometimes yeah, he's more tans, sometimes me, he's a pirate, and he bears a striking resemblance to Doctor Manowar from the hey, Jellyfish you ruined my childhood. Why does he have so many different disguises? Wait, 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 Someone who's been there from the very beginning. Someone who's not even from Bikini Bottom. Someone who's not even from the ocean. That's right. 
Sandy Cheeks. Sandy Cheeks why, is the why, why you say about, Why you say it was Sandy? Why you say it's Sandy? But why did she come to Bikini Bottom? In the episode Chimps Ahoy, we find out she was hired by a group of chimpanzees to come underwater and create inventions. But why does she need to be underwater to make inventions? She could have just as easily have made any of her inventions on land. It must be extremely expensive to maintain a giant dome of air underwater. There is no way the only reason she's here is to make random inventions. I think this whole episode is an elaborate ruse to throw off the other characters from the real reason Sandy is in Bikini Bottom. To spy on the main characters and make sure the show stays on track. Oh. Many of the times the characters are in danger, Sandy conveniently steps in to save the day. And many of the wacky, that. entertaining episode she plots are driven by the main characters. characters. Everything she does she is a calculated like, thing. all just saving the main character. She don't save none of the side characters. Right? But, it, but if the side characters get in trouble, she won't save them. She just tells them when things are coming. That's it. But why? Like, like, why Sandy? I can see why she do it, but why, why do you do it? To carry out the hidden agenda of the filmmakers. Her entire friendship with Spongebob and the other characters is built on a lie. But you're probably saying, Sandy is a sweet, friendly squirrel. There's no way she's behind this. You're not convinced yet? No. That's okay. Because what I'm about to show you is so mind-blowing, so insanely revealing, that it's actually please, the whole reason I decided please. to make this right, video. I want to know why. Ready for the big one. I want to. Season 10, episode mm -hmm. 10, Feral Friends, is the episode that unlocks this entire mystery. During a birthday party, a green moon suddenly appears and turns everyone except Sandy into less evolved, real-life versions of themselves. Sandy is completely caught off guard by this and decides to call someone for help. And take a guess who she calls. Hello, French narrator speaking. Hey, Frenchie, it's me, Sandy. Ah, uh, Sandy Cheeks. How is it hanging? What the? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't say another word. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. Huh. Yeah, yeah I guess that's a pretty interesting clip, yeah. Holy shit! Sandy literally calls the narrator to let him know what's going on and ask for instructions on what to do next. She has been working with him the entire fucking time. He even has a picture of her the, on his what desk. The, what the? What the? What the? What the? What the? The narrator in the show. If this is all a television show right, filmed yeah. by scuba divers, then how are we seeing inside the buildings? It's not like any of the humans filming the show could fit inside them. It's the one annoying thing that keeps this theory from being complete. I mean, the most logical explanation is that they have hidden cameras inside of everyone's homes, but we never really see anything like that. Holy shit. Season 6, episode 24, Truth or Square. The Spongebob 10th anniversary special where they reveal lots of stuff about the characters. But the most damning piece of evidence comes from when the characters get lost in the Krusty Krab mm -hmm. vents and end up in a room full of monitors showing live footage of all of their homes. Oh! My house is on TV! All of our houses are on TV! <laughs> Gary the Snail, you get down from that bed this instant! Hey, there's my house! Look, it's Sandy! And who is the character responsible for all of these hidden cameras? Mr. Krabs, why do you have cameras watching us? No, oh, but well, uh, Dave, I just I want to make sure it, you it, all it, after every meal. It, Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Dental hygiene is very, very important. Dental hygiene? Eugene, you lying bastard. Oh, of course he would sell out his friend for I, I, a quick I can buck. See about the money. And if there's any part of you that thinks there's some chance Mr. Krabs has all these hidden cameras for some other reason, then take a look at what happens next. What? Hey, who are those guys? I think it's us, Patrick. But who are they? All right, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. A cameraman and a boom operator have been following around the characters this entire time. And just like the gorilla, as soon as they get seen, they make a run for it. The case is closed. So, so you now with this, you have the camera in front of them, 
for all the years of watching Spongebob, not one creature figured out that the, that they were being filmed as a reality show, except for the creature that actually, actually helping them. The creature that helping them, they try to keep it on the low. Then you got Sam being a spy. Then you got Mr. Kraut working undercover to show to get undercover. And I think I think they actually paid Mr. Crab a little little extra so Mr. Crab can keep it down on the low low. And then they got that out of town citizen who pretend like he a director, so they don't know that he actually working with them. And then you got the doctor. Who actually helping them keep everything in one piece. And so I think he pretend to be a doctor. So then he can help the creature. So if the creature need any help so they can come to him. So he can keep on low while they do whatever they are doing. The television theory is something the show has consistently alluded to from the very first episode to the newest episodes. Maybe one day the show will actually directly address it and our characters will discover the real truth about their world. But regardless, that's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. See you next time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. Wait, wait. You thought I forgot about the mermaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I thought, didn't you? what about All right, that? Here's a quick bonus theory. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were two superheroes that fought crime underwater and protected the sea from evil. Whether or not they actually did this or it was all staged for television isn't clear, but they both spent their lives underwater until they became old and retired. But after spending so much time under the sea, they no longer fit in with human society. Plus, Mermaid Man is clearly dealing with some form of dementia and PTSD from fighting evil. But you can't retire! There's evil afoot! What? <laughs> evil! So, they decided to live the rest of their lives in Bikini Bottom. And in order to fit in better with their fellow sea creatures, they made the permanent decision to shrink themselves using Mermaid Man's shrinking belt. The case is closed. Mm -hmm. Again.